Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the X79UP4. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box to decode some of the features that Gigabyte has included here. If you're not familiar with Gigabyte's naming scheme for their motherboards, typically the first number here is going to be the chipset. So we're working with the X79 chipset. This is an LGA2011 motherboard, so it's going to feature or it's going to support Intel Core i7 processors and those are the Socket 2011 Sandy Bridge E processors. That's their enthusiast line, top of the range. It's where you go if you really want to get uh, hexa-core processors that are, go beyond the quad cores that are available from the mainstream line. And it's still definitely a very viable chipset. Uh, it's still going to be around for a while. Rumor has it that they will also be releasing Ivy Bridge E processors in the future that will also be compatible with this socket. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, definitely if you're going to be doing workstation type activity or higher end computing stuff, that's the way you want to go. Now uh, the next part of the uh, product number here, we have the number itself and Gigabyte will usually range those numbers between three and seven, higher numbers being uh, fancier and um, more Motherboards have more features, generally speaking, so we got a four here, so this one's right in the middle. UP, you might be familiar, familiar with UD, which is ultra durable, which refers to uh, some of the components and the build quality of the motherboard. The P that they've in indicated here is referring to the power, and uh, they have integrated some uh, new international rectifier uh, ICs into this motherboard. That's to provide more secure and stable power delivery to the board. So you have 3D power. You also have their patent pending 3D BIOS. They have dual UF, UEFI BIOS, so you can switch back and forth between those. That'll give you a recovery BIOS or optionally a BIOS you can switch to um, if you uh, want to jump between a couple different overclocks and, and stock settings, for example. And we shouldn't call it BIOS anymore. We should call it UEFI, but for now, it's got both, so you can sort of associate the two. Uh, back here, we have, it once again, Intel Core i7 processor supported X79 chipset. Here's another part of that UD, the uh, twice the copper PCB that's used in the in the PCB. Also a glass fabric design to protect against humidity. Uh, we also have some awards up here. One best of Computex 2012 from Tom's Hardware. Uh, here is a look at the Power Stage IR3550 ICs that they've integrated here. There's a bit more information on that on the back here. So essentially, uh, the Power Stage uh, are more power efficient and operate cooler than competing MOSFETs, resulting in longer component lifespan and more headroom for greater overclocking performance. So there you have it. Uh, some more specs here on the back of the box. A lot of this stuff is repeated from the front. Down here in the lower left, we have some detailed specifications. So if you guys want to pause and take a closer look at those, you can. I'm going to go ahead and take a look inside the box. Now for accessories, we have ooh, a bunch of SLI bridges as this is, of course, compatible with uh, two-way, three-way, and four-way SLI, as well as Crossfire. So we have a single Crossfire bridge, so if you want to do two-way Crossfire, you should be set up with that. Uh, if you want to do three-way or beyond, uh, you might need another bridge. Often these Crossfire bridges will come with Crossfire-capable cards from AMD. Uh, we also have a flexible SLI bridge here, so that looks like it could do four or even five slot spacing, so you should be set. If you're going to do two-way SLI, which is much more common than the higher end SLI configurations. And then also we have here a three-way SLI bridge. This is a rigid PCB one, so it gives a little bit of extra support to the cards. And then finally, uh, the same one that we have inside this little package, a four-way SLI bridge. So if you're gonna be going for some high-end uh, video card setups, you should be all set. Here's your input-output shield. As you can see, it's black. You have color coding on there to tell you what's what. We also have some serial ATA cables. So uh, right there we have uh, two plus two serial ATA cables. They're all SATA revision one, two, or three compatible. Uh, you get two that have straight plugs on both ends, and then you get two that have a straight plug on one end and a 90 degree angled plug on the other end. And they all have the little clasps to hold them in place. Here's your Gigabyte X79 UP4 manual. So this is definitely important to keep on hand while you're doing your build. You also have the utility DVD. There's a very, very, very good chance that you're going to have updated versions of the drivers on this disk as well as any software that's included there. So I would recommend heading over to the Gigabyte website to download those rather than loading off of the disk. Uh, also in the manual here, uh, you have cool stuff like a, a block diagram, which I really like that Gigabyte includes that. Uh, detailed specs on all of the included components as well as important stuff such as which memory slots to install your memory to, as this does have lots of memory slots, supports quad channel memory. Here you also have a multilingual installation guidebook, so if English is not your first language, you should be covered. And next up is the motherboard. 
Here's a look at the X79 UP4 motherboard itself and uh, one other item from the accessories that I forgot to include. That's your little Gigabyte case badge. Uh, and as far as the design of the board, as you can tell, you have a matte black PCB in the back. Uh, pretty much all black sockets, also with some gray on there, as well as some uh, sort of gunmetal gray heat sinks. I really like the color scheme of this board. It looks quite nice and it's also fairly uh, understated, which means that uh, if you're going to go with the color scheme for your build, which a lot of enthusiasts tend to like to do if you're going to invest a lot in a high-end computer, it's nice to make it look pretty as well. And uh, if that's the case, this board should blend in with most different color schemes. Here's a look at the back just so you can see the PCB again, matte black. Uh, there's the back plate for your um, 2011 Universal uh, mounting socket. You also have a back plate here for your um, VRM uh, heatsink. You can remove that from the front via some Phillips head screws and then you also have Phillips head screws down there for your X79 chipset cover. So again, also easy to remove and reinstall if you ever need to do that in the future for whatever reason. Uh, now let's talk about fan headers. Uh, you get the CPU fan header which is located right here. That's a four pin PWM fan header. You also get two more four pin uh, fan headers for case fans. One is up here in the top left. One is up here in the top right, and then finally you have two more which are down here in the bottom left and the bottom right, and those are both three-pin fan headers. So you should be able to connect the majority of your case fans to the motherboard if you so desire. Next up, we're going to take a closer look at the board in detail, and I'll go over as much of all this as I possibly can for you guys. Uh, so starting down here by that previously mentioned fan header, we have your front panel connector area. Uh, those are recessed and those are color-coded. You also have a little chart right there so you can tell more easily what's what. Uh, you can also reference your manual, of course, if you're not sure. A little clear CMOS uh, jumper right above that if you need to clear the CMOS. Uh, just get a little jumper, pop it on, you can do that. Uh, you also have some serial ATA uh, front facing right there. Those are integrated via an add-on SATA chip. And uh, that's a Marvell 88SE 9172. Uh, you get two here. You get also these two gray ones right there. It also controls uh, a couple eSATA ports at the back I.O. All of those are RAID 0 and 1 compatible. Next up, you have some USB headers. So the red one right there is going to support uh, your faster than average charging capabilities. So um, that's a good one to route to your front panel, for example. It's also the red indicates it's going to be always on, even while the system is off, as long as you have uh, power connected and your power supply turned on, uh, so you can charge even while the system is off. A couple more USB 2.0 headers to connect to front or rear, pan rear panel. You have a TPM, or Trusted Platform Module, header right there if you want to uh, integrate that into your system. You also have that system fan header that I showed you already, a COM header, and finally your front panel audio as well as a little 2-pin uh, SPDIF header right there. Speaking of audio, we got a Realtek ALC892 codec controlling your audio. It's 7.1 channel audio capable. And you can see some of the audio componentry caps and whatnot all right there as well as your Realtek chip. Uh, next up, let's talk about PCI Express because you get plenty of expansion here. You also get, as previously mentioned, four-way SLI or Crossfire X capability. Now you'll note here your full-length PCI Express slots, that's 16X length, uh, and they're wired up so that you can set up multi-card configurations if that's your preference. Uh, you should definitely start off with the top one up here. Uh, now bear in mind that with the uh, Intel uh, with the Intel processors, that being the Sandy Bridge E processors in the Core i7 Extreme series, uh, you get 40 PCI Express lanes, and those can be easily distributed via all of these to give you the maximum bandwidth capable for your video cards you might be installing. Uh, you're going to run at X16 on the top one here. If you're going to go with the two card configuration, you should probably use the top one and the fifth slot here, although you can use the top and the third slot. If you use the top and the fifth, those will both run at X16 speeds. Uh, the third slot and the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh slot, see I'm counting these, uh, are both wired up for X8. And then if you are going to go with a full four card solution, these will all be running at X16 on the top, and then X8, X8, and X8. Otherwise, you'll be at X16, X16, or X16, X8, X8. Anyway, you guys can pretty much figure that out, how that works. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you have a couple BCI Express uh, X1 slots right there for some add-on cards if you're not covering those up with GPUs, of course. And finally, you have a legacy PCI slot right there if you want to install an older PCI slot, or PCI card, I should say. Moving right along, uh, to the right of that, we have this Gigabyte logoed heatsink, and that's for your X79 chipset. That should keep it nice and cool. There's sort of a look at it from the side so you can see the fins on that. And then I'm also going to sort of point out that it 
controls some of your serial ATA over here on the side. I already told you there's a Marvell chip controlling these gray ones over here. Uh, the rest here are all controlled by that X79 chipset. Uh, you got two SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second ports right there. Then you get four SATA Revision 2 3 gigabit per second ports right there. And those are capable of doing RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. Moving along up the side of the board, once I get it propped back up here, of course. Uh, what else do we have? We have a USB 3.0 front panel connector right there. So if you are rocking some USB 3.0 on your front panel, plug that right in. Above that, you have your main 24-pin motherboard power connector. Uh, apart from that, up the side of the board, uh, not a whole lot other than that uh, system fan header that I already mentioned. And then, of course, we have our quad channel memory. Now, uh, usually that's all right here, but since this is X79 and it's quad channel, they've actually arranged the trace layout so that uh, you get connection on either side of the CPU for quad channel. Uh, bear in mind, you're going to be wanting the refer to reference your motherboard manual to make sure that you are connecting all of these in the correct order. Um, I'm pretty sure, although you should ver verify the manual, but I'm pretty sure you're going to start off with the gray slots here, and then you'll populate the black ones uh, if you're going to be going with more than four DIMMs. Uh, all of these DIMM slots are uh, compatible with uh, DDR3 memory. You want to go with 1.5 volt uh, DDR3 RAM. Uh, you can do up to eight DIMMs. You can get eight gigs per DIMM, so that gives you up to 64 gigabytes total system memory that you can install right here. Uh, again, quad channel, so make sure you buy your memory in sets of four. I would recommend going with the exact same type of memory so you make sure you get the best compatibility. And then you can also do uh, overclock speeds of up to 2133. And it's, of course, also downwards compatible with 1866, 1600, 1333, etc. Uh, also, you want to go with non-ECC memory, and uh, it does support Intel's XMP or Extreme Memory Profiles. Um, so you can install that and then go into the BIOS to load those up if you want to get your memory running at the appropriate speed. Now, uh, we already talked about the socket, which is LGA 2011. Uh, it's currently covered by this little protective panel. Uh, you have two uh, little arms on that that you can use to raise that socket to install your CPU. And the really nice thing about these is it has this universal backplate. So if you're going to go with aftermarket cooling, which uh, is pretty much required for most of the 2011 CPUs because a lot of them don't ship with a stock heatsink fan, but you can mount that straight to the motherboard. Definitely saves a lot of time and you don't have to worry about getting a backplate in there or anything like that. Up here you can see the power delivery for the CPU as well as the memory. It's three stage power delivery, so you get two stages going over to uh, either of your memory channels as well as uh, power directly to the CPU. Uh, that's going to be using your IR3550 uh, ICs or integrated circuits and that's providing digital power delivery to all of your main components up here which is uh, essential especially if you want to go for overclocking and if you want your overclocks to be stable and last a long time you want to make sure that you keep that temperature down and uh, for that reason you have a nice beefy heat sink up there. Also right next to that you have your 8 pin supplemental CPU power connector and uh, definitely want to plug that in of course your system generally speaking will not run without it and lastly we will finish off with the uh, inputs and outputs here on the side of the board. Uh, so first off, for USB 2.0, you have two, four, six, eight of those, all the black ports right there. You have a combo PS2 port right there for a mouse or a keyboard. Uh, you have some uh, audio outputs right here, so you have a Toslink optical audio out. You also have a coaxial audio output. Uh, a couple eSATA ports right there, again, controlled by a Marvell controller, compatible with RAID 0, RAID 1. You have a couple more USB 3.0 ports there on the back. Uh, you have your integrated NIC, and uh, let me reference, that is an Intel, oh, it's an Intel NIC, uh, gigabit network controller right there. And finally, you have your analog audio outputs for your 7.1 channel audio. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte X79 UP4 motherboard featuring the X79 chipset and the 2011 socket for Intel Sandy Bridge E processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.